Good morning, guys. I wanted to make a video with quite a few tips in it about decoupaging furniture because I still get a lot of questions. And decoupage is not complicated, but you want to make sure you start out small and practice on any any surface, any wooden surface that you can find before you do that. So let me just give you a couple of other tips before you decoupage that piece of furniture. So some people have asked me if they even have to base coat a surface and that really does depend on a couple of things. This is just plain old, I don't even know if it's a, yeah it looks like it's just the, the top part of this is a wood look. This was a cabinet door and I personally would use napkins to decoupage and napkins are so sheer you do need some kind of a color underneath them and it's got to be a very light or a pastel color. To be safe you can almost always use chalk paint and I always use the deco art chalky finish of a combination between chalk and acrylic so it gives a nice smooth finish but still velvety matte that velvety matte look that you want but the other huge bonus about using this chalk paint is that if you've got any scratches or any indentations if the furniture is beat up the chalk paint kind of works to smooth a lot of that out because it's a bit thicker and it gets into those minor cracks and areas. That's one thing. The other thing is it also goes over brand new shiny surfaces. It used to be that you needed to sand all of that down and start all over and you may have time for that and you may not mind that. I personally, especially because I attempt to put videos out every week, I really don't have time to sand down whole pieces. However, you don't need to sand with chalk paint. You can put it on any shiny surface, any flat surface, and you can even water it down to make it look like a wash if you'd like. So that way it's a little bit lighter. This I watered down a little bit. I prefer to use a roller and when you're working on furniture, if you have one of the wider rollers, it's a little bit better. And then they have these smaller rollers. Let me see if I can find one here. Here we go. And this was just from the hardware store. And these rollers tend to give a nice flat, even coat, no brush strokes. You can of course go with the uh, old fashioned, I say old fashioned, chalk paint's not that old. But this brush, remember how they always used to kind of crisscross? That uh, I would do if your surface is quite damaged or it's got a whole lot of scratches on it because when you do this type of painting and crisscross the chalk paint all over, it will get into all of those surfaces. Okay, so that's my recommendation for chalk paint. The other thing is if you are doing an iron on method with napkins you definitely want to use chalk paint because it has a much higher melting point. If you were to put your iron on the highest possible temperature on acrylic paint it could melt it or it could cause it to bubble so you don't want that to happen and of course you always want to use parchment paper over your surface. I have quite a few videos out on how to decoupage with your iron on furniture on flat surfaces that's the only time you would really want to do that it's quite hard to do on any rounded surface. Okay, so let's move on to the next tip. If you're using napkins to decoupage your surface, just a couple of things. As I mentioned, there's something called the iron-on method. Now you can use regular decoupage glue, but you can use this as your first coat and make sure you put a lot of decoupage glue on there. You apply two coats and I always apply it horizontally first. I let it dry and then I apply it vertically the second time and let that dry. And then the napkin decoupage glue, you definitely want this on hand no matter what if you're using napkins. You lay the napkin down, you apply a lot of glue on your brush, and then I always start from the center out. I don't actually recommend that on pieces of furniture. If at all possible, the iron-on method is the best way to go. You will get absolutely the lowest, smallest amount of wrinkles that way. I do recommend the DecoArt napkin decoupage glue. Links for 
everything that I can find will be down below this video for you too. But let's just say you found this beautiful paper that you'd like to work with. So I found this paper in an art supply store. It's like an art paper supply store. And it is thicker than napkins. It's thicker than rice paper. It is a thicker paper. I, I would not iron this on here. So what I would just do is apply a little decoupage glue at a time. So I would start in the corner, apply, and this would be the regular decoupage glue, not the napkin decoupage glue. And I would just apply a little bit at a time, press the paper down, make sure that it stays in place without any wrinkles. It's a lot harder to wrinkle this kind of paper because it's thicker. Then I would apply some more decoupage glue under where I just was, press the paper down. You could even use a brayer if you'd like because a hard brayer is going to move any excess glue out so you won't end up with bubbles, which can sometimes happen. If you get that and you're dry, you know, the, the project is dry and you love it, it's just that you see a few bubbles in it. Just take a pin and pop the bubbles, take a little decoupage glue on your finger and press them down. That's going to get into that little hole that you just made with the pin and it will flatten it out. It won't be quite as flawless, but it will be really hard to see, so I wouldn't worry about that. And you want to have a little excess on the sides because then you can just file those off very easily when you're done. So. An option is art paper, and you want to make sure that the art paper is not going to run or bleed. So again, you can also use fabric. Again, with fabric, you want to make sure you're using the decoupage, regular decoupage glue, not napkin. You want to follow those same instructions where you just add a little at a time. And probably one of the most important things when you are decoupaging with fabric is you want to make sure this has completely cured. And there's a difference between the word dry and cure. When something dries, you touch it and you go, oh, you know what, that, that feels dry. Okay, let's go to the next step. No, you want it to cure. Cure means that it has dried thoroughly all the way through. So even if it feels dry, you might still have some dampness underneath that you can't feel because fabric is a lot thicker. The only safe way to see if it is cured is you definitely want to leave this type of surface overnight. I personally let it dry for 24 hours. If it's summertime, I try to put it in the driest, sunniest spot. And if it's the winter time, I put it near a heater and I just leave it. Don't be fooled after a few hours and go, oh, it feels fine. Let's move on to the next step. That can actually cause mold and problems down the road that we don't want. So the next thing you could possibly do is you can make your own copies. I always suggest if you don't have a laser printer, you're going to make your life a lot easier if you go to a copy center because their color printers are all laser prints, which means they will not run, they're waterproof, they will not bleed. And in a, in a case like this, I think this hydrangea is beautiful. So I could make some copies and cut out, and I recommend that you have a pair of curved scissors. They're very small, they're curved, and they are so much easier to cut these things out with. Once you're done cutting it all out, and we'll go on to the next step from here, you want to see where this looks the best on your furniture. So before you get to work and start to decoupage, lay out your pieces first and say, you know what, I really like this pattern. I like it this way. I like it this way. Don't glue anything down until you're perfectly in love with the pattern. If you're not sure if you have a laser copier or an inkjet, inkjet is the enemy when we're working with this. Just make a copy of anything 
and run a brush over it uh, quite a few times with water and or decoupage glue and you'll see what I mean. If you have an inkjet printer, it's going to smear and blur and no, no, no. Now let's say you decoupaged, you're all done and you look at your work and you say, you know what? I don't like that. For some reason, I just don't like the way it looks. You can always take a hot, damp rag. You want to wring it out as much as you can, but make it as hot as you can and just lay it right over that decoupage glue and let it sit for a couple of minutes. You then want to, you, sometimes you can just peel it right up or you can just use your fingers and ball it up. But these straight edge razors, you can use this on a surface because it will do the best job at removing it and just starting all over because that does happen. That is almost the final step. There's two more things I would like to add. First, I have found, I learned somewhere along the line that you can use those molds with hot glue. And you can actually change the whole look of a piece of furniture with these. I will admit to you, this takes a little bit of a learning curve. So here's the back of it. That's all hot glue. Look how flexible it is. They don't break. The only problem that I had with learning this, and there's a little string, is that I went out and I purchased a very fine point for my glue gun, or I got a miniature glue gun that had a really serious fine point. And these are also very easy to file. You, if you have something hanging off that you don't want, like there's a little piece right there. Hard to see with that white on white. You can just take your uh, file and file that piece right off. It comes right off. You don't have to worry about cracking like you do with some clay. These are very easy to paint and I just used regular old hot glue sticks. You don't need any special glue sticks made for molds or... Uh, the only thing I do recommend is you want to make sure you're working with a silicone mold. And you also want to make sure you're using a very good glue, like E6000. That will last forever. And that is only for when you're ready to attach these to your piece. And once you use it, it's on there permanently. So here is the final part of this video, and it is a very important part because depending on what you're using the furniture for, you're going to have to find the right top coat. Check out the video that I have down below because I go into greater detail about what you want to use to protect from heat. Uh, you might want something for outside and you need it to be protected from the weather in those elements. So guys, that is our video for this week. I think I said a whole lot, but it is really important. I have an ebook called Successful Decoupage Every Time. It's $4.99 on Amazon and you ha there's a free link to turn your smartphone or, or iPad or your smart device into a Kindle for free. So the ebook is available. I wanted that book to mainly be a quick reference guide for you, so you can check that out on Amazon. And in the meantime, I hope this helped you out, my friends. Thank you so much for sharing my videos, for liking my videos. I read all of your comments, and I will see you guys next week with another video. Thanks so much, my friends. Bye-bye.